Hey everyone, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com. I am being joined by the NoDQ panel. The first time we're doing this particular four-person panel, first off, I would like to introduce David Payne, who has been one of our regulars here at NoDQ.com. How are you doing, David? Pretty well. Thank you for having me on, as usual. The money second, in the bank. Yep, money in the bank. The second person we have here is hiding himself behind a money in the bank briefcase. It is good old JM, Jeff Meacham. What's up, everybody? Yes, Jeff Can't Meacham is back. Couldn't see Jeff for a second there, but I had to I had to throw in the Greg and Jen gift to, close, to preview Money in the Bank. So there we go. I'm here. That's, that's a reference to <laughs> Greg Cherry, of course. And of course. Wife. And his lovely wife, yes, who, yep. who, who gifted me those, that for my birthday last year. And before, finally, we year. have uh, Interstate Kyle's grandfather, Gary, a.k.a. Angry Grandpa or Stone Cold Grandpa, on with us for the first time on a panel video. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing real good. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I hope I don't screw this up for you guys. So it's my <laughs> first time. So, Well, you'll have a different perspective from us because you're a little bit older, a few years older than us. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of years. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's nice to have you on and get a little bit of a different perspective. We have Money in the Bank, of course, Sunday night. I'm actually looking forward to this one more than the last few pay-per-views. I think I'm looking forward to this pay-per-view the most since WrestleMania. But that is really because Money in the Bank is usually a very good show. The Money in the Bank matches are always really good. It should be a fun show. The two Money in the Bank matches are always spectacles. And um, I think those two matches will carry the show. Right now, we only have five matches announced. And this always happens. We just had the go-home show. And my guess is in the next couple days... They'll announce one or two more matches for the kickoff. I think for the last pay-per-view, they waited until Sunday, the day of the show, to have a kickoff match announced. So it's like, who even cares at this point? But we'll talk about a possible kickoff match at the end. Let's go ahead and talk about the five matches. And uh, I'm sure we all have a lot to say about these matches. How about we start off with the women's Money in the Bank ladder match? We have Charlotte, Becky Lynch... Carmella, Natalia, and Tamina Snuka. Now, a lot of people seem to think that Carmella is going to be the favorite in this match. My viewpoint is that it's too obvious. I think with James Ellsworth out there, he'll almost certainly interfere and get involved. But I think Carmella winning is just a little bit too obvious. I do think a heel is going to win, though. But I'm going to save my prediction. Um, David, let's start with you. What are your thoughts and your predictions for this match? Yeah, Carmella's being booked as the obvious one. I'm not completely sold on her out of all the bunch that's in here, quite honestly. I mean, you got second-generation wrestlers here, and she's, what, an ex-cheerleader or something, Carmella? Um, my prediction with her in particular, I think James Ellsworth is going to do something goofy, like old school, like when he first got in, do something stupid, cost her, and then you're going to see a rift, no pun intended, between <laughs> those two. Well so, played, sir. Yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, I want to say Charlotte. I really do. I want to say Charlotte because I want to say that maybe they'll save her having an epic cash in for a future pay per view. So I, I'm I'm actually going to go I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say Charlotte, even though it's obvious. But just to throw the booking thing out there, I, I think James Ellsworth cost it for Carmella, and I think they'll build her just a little bit more. I think that's a solid uh, point. Yeah, Gary, what, what about you? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I thought leading up to this, that it was going to be James Ellsworth doing, you know, I was thinking Carmella was going to win it, but now listening to um, what he just said, he makes a good point about that. I think Ellsworth's probably going to screw it up like he does everything else. <laughs> uh, I'd, l I'd like to see Natalia win, just for the fact that she, you know, she's kind of been crapped on for a long time, you know, been pushed, pushed to the back. And I'd like to see her get at least get one push before she, you know, leaves the company. Yeah, so I agree I, on I'm that. I'm going to... I'm going to go with Natalia just just out of um, you know like I'd, I'd really like to see her get some, you know get something going here. Right. Well, before yeah. Jeff gives his his thoughts, I just wanted to say I agree with you on that, and uh, I think Jeff missed part of SmackDown. Um, Natalia actually took the fall in the match with Charlotte on SmackDown. She Good got point. clean pin by Charlotte. So I'm thinking Natalia's going to win. I, I think a heel will win this match, and I think it, it's Natalia's time. She hasn't really gotten the big push towards the women's title. And I think this is her, her big opportunity to shine. So, Jeff, now we'll get your thoughts. Who do you think is going to win? Do you think this match will live up to the expectations? You know, people hoping this will be a great match. 
I think this is going to be something that we're going to be talking about on our uh, No DQ uh, 20 year anniversary next year. I think it's going to be something that when we all get together, wh- whichever group this gets together for that big moment that we do next year, um, I think we're going to talk about this match as a as a jumping point for the women's division that has been seriously lacking the last year or so on both sides of the coin. Um, thank you for making me laugh, by the way, because this 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 match means something to me with my with your women's wrestling and just my overall opinion of the, of the women's division on both brands. I wanted so bad for Charlotte to not only win the briefcase, but completely defy logic and cash in on whoever wins the WWE Championship match, right. the, the men's match, just to throw everybody for a loop. But you made a very good point, uh, Gary and Aaron both. Natalia took the fall on SmackDown. And that's usually indicative of something big happening for them at the pay-per-view. Now, Natty has been a Twitter buddy forever, so her, she's going to like it. I'm going to pick her. So I'm going to pick her as my favorite, but I still have a thing, a little earworm back here somewhere that says Charlotte's going to somehow pull it out. Right. So you, you think that might be your second choice. Let's, let's do second choices, David and then Gary and then Jeff. Second okay, choice. well, let me just let me just interject this before I give you my second choice. Just a quick question. Do you think this match will come off a lot better than that cage match did? Because for all intents and purposes, it was sort of a flop, wasn't it? Do you think they, this one will be more well executed, Jeff? I think I think that if if the five of them can stay on their game and stick to the stick to the plan, I think this will be the def, one of the more defining money to make matches probably since the first one. Okay, and as for my second pick, that I, I I like that with Natty. You're right because in my heart, another no pun intended, she deserves a push. You know what I'm saying? She's really one of the top women's wrestlers in all of the world. So that would be my second pick. What about you, Gary? Yeah, like I say, I, um, my second choice would probably be Charlotte, more likely. But um, I really want to see Natty get a shot because, but but I'm afraid that Vince is gonna since he doesn't like the hearts. That they'll end up screwing her. Again. <laughs> screw her again. You know, it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be the St. Louis screw job instead of the freaking Canadian, you know, the Montreal screw job. That's but right. I hope not. Well, that, uh, yeah. really that might like, happen really in the like WWE that. title match. We might see a St. Louis screw job in that, but we'll get to that in a few minutes yeah. here. Um, <laughs> Jeff, before you give your second pick, I just wanted to add maybe we'll see Charlotte do her big moonsault off one of the ladders. I'm thinking that's gonna be one Ooh, of the big spots. That would be so- Sweet. So, Jeff, um, you're, yeah, you're yeah, pick. I, you know, we're all picking either Natty or Charlotte. So I'm gonna stick with the stick, stick with the script here. I'm gonna go with Charlotte with second pick. Nobody's going with Becky. You know, I could see her possibly winning and and uh, maybe turning heel at some point. I'd like to see that, but I'm not gonna predict that. I'm gonna go with Tamina as my second pick just because it's totally random. And okay, we've seen it happen before. We saw Zack Ryder win at WrestleMania. And that yeah, who, picked, who was the guy who picked Samoa Joe? I don't think anybody thought Samoa Joe yeah. was going to win that one the last yeah. time. Gabby Booker T. Like, literally nobody's thinking Tamina's <laughs> going to win it. So, hell, I'm going with Tamina as my second pick. But I'm going to go with my number one pick is the safe one as Natalia. So, there you have okay. it. Um, we we'll go. see how this goes. Well, hopefully, this will be a match that lives up to the expectations. And we'll get to see some cool spots from the women. And they'll really be able to shine in this environment. Um, so let's talk about the tag team title match for the SmackDown tag team title belts. Yeah, I said belts. <gasps> you said the B word. I said the Strap. B word. <laughs> the well, the Usos. Team worse. Strap's even worse than belt. Oh, man. Yeah, the this Usos so versus guys, the right? New Day. Usos versus the New Day. Um, New Day just re-debuted as part of the SmackDown brand a few weeks ago. I, I don't see them winning the titles in their first match back for the titles. I think it's going to be more of a chase. So I'm going to see uh, the Usos retaining somehow, uh, maybe a DQ or something or a count out, something like that. And the Usos will retain in that fashion to keep the feud going. So Gary, we'll start with you and then David, um, your prediction for this match. Um, I hate to say this, but you know, I can't stay on the new day. <laughs> I never could. You're on the wrong but, channel, bud. Yeah, I, I know I'm on the wrong channel. But I got a bad feeling about this that the New Day is going to win. They're going to put those guys right back into this into this draw again because they, you know, they they make money for the company, and uh, I, I I hope it doesn't happen. I hope they they draw this out for a while. But I just got this bad feeling in my gut that they're going to end up winning this again, and then we're going to start all over again with the same garbage that they had, you know, with them again. <laughs> The only thing I'd like to see him do, though, if they change, is get rid of the get rid of the uh, ice cream cart and get a hot dog cart instead. 
<laughs> they, they should just they should come out with um, you know big hot dogs in their mouths and then throw hot dogs oh, to the fans. Oh damn. So anyhow, that's just you know. <laughs> that is yeah. savage right there, my That's friend. Savage. Sorry about that. Yeah. Dave, go um, ahead. <laughs> I, I, you know what though? I, look, uh, that was maybe the you know million pound elephant in the room. I'm glad he said something because I'm over with New Day. I, yeah. I mean, when I mean over, I don't mean in the wrestling term. I mean I know they are over with the kids, but I think that's it. I mean, their matches are so goofy, and as baby faces, they win half of their matches by doing heel tactics. It's old. The segments, it's like that's the only thing they got for an interesting opening segment is have New Day come out there for 10 minutes. And it's just, to me, it's so it's so formulaic. It's, we've seen it. It's too much. And there goes my theory of, well, that SmackDown being the wrestling show because they completely added a whole entertainment aspect with them. And I, I couldn't agree more with Gary. I, I think they're going to win because I think SmackDown needs a kick in the butt with the tag team division. I mean, they haven't really had anybody hold it. Unless you look on my Facebook page and you'll see Rift and I are the SmackDown tag champion. That's probably better than what they got right now. But, yeah. You know. That would, hey, what do you think, Greg? Well, I'm Jeff. That's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Jeff. Did I say Greg? I'm sorry. Well, you know, that's what happens when you're on a hiatus. Yeah, but, Jeff. Uh, that's okay. You're playing <laughs> poker. Hold, hold. Hopefully Greg will win enough money to buy you out of the jail that you just put yourself in there, Payne. Oh, no. um, anyway, uh, I I'm gonna go with the boss man here. I'm gonna go with uh, the Usos retaining. I think that I think New Day is too too uh, too new on SmackDown to make an impact just yet on the brand as far as tag team championships go. I think we'll see them win the belts someday, but not this day. The New Day will not win on this day. They'll be the Usos retaining. Maybe they'll win in Brooklyn and then start another. 400 and whatever day run as champions. What was it? 480 days? Three, 380 days. No. It was more than yeah. CM Punk because Asuka just passed CM Punk's record and now she's on her way to breaking New Day's record. Oh, that's record. right. That's right. I okay, mean, look, so, yeah, they, sell, yeah. they sell a lot of merch. That's the reason why. But I think that uh, Xavier could be better off on his own. I think he's got enough mic skills. We obviously know what Kofi can do as far as in ring stuff. You know, I'm not too sure about where Big E would fall into that category he could probably be maybe dominant dominant heel but i just think it's old that's i mean that's about the only thing i can say i just think the act is old now and as we all know xavier woods looks good on film um <laughs> anyway uh, wow yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next match after that there we go damn, <laughs> damn jeff way. all right so now we have <laughs> i'm fired <laughs> well not from here we're, we're not from here from wwe ever yeah that's true yeah um <sighs> we have naomi defending the SmackDown Women's Championship belt against oh. Lana. And on SmackDown, we saw uh, Naomi pick up a victory, and then Lana took out Naomi with her finisher. That's the only move she's done since being on SmackDown is hitting her yeah. finisher on Naomi. So a lot of people are thinking this might be Jinder Mahal 2.0 when Lana pulls off the huge um, upset victory. I'm thinking it doesn't happen. I, I'm thinking Naomi retains the title here. Now the question is, will this match be any good? Will it surprise people and actually be a really good match? Will Lana so, show that she's really um, gained some abilities in, in recent months? Or will this match be a complete disaster? Uh, Jeff, let's start with you, your thoughts, and then Gary, and then uh, David. I think if the reports on the only website I go to, NoDQ.com, or any, or any indication of, uh, of uh, Lana's developed skills in NXT on the house shows, I think we're going to see a showing from Lana. We're going to see something that we didn't really expect to see out of the woman who used to come out in the business suits and the bun in her hair. We're going to see something different out of Lana, but she's not going to win the championship. She's going to make a good showing and really surprise all of us with her uh, in-ring television debut. But I don't think we're going to see her become the champion. I think we're going to see Naomi continue on until at least SummerSlam. Gary? Gary? Well, I'm going to go the opposite. I think that I'm going to – WWE is notorious for pulling this garbage, bringing – you know, somebody comes back, com, comes in new, uh, although she's not new to the company, but she's new back to wrestling again. And just from the gist that I got from SmackDown last week, you know, with Naomi coming out after she got, you know, attacked and then come out and say she wants revenge and I'll put my title on the line that maybe WWE is going to pull their, you know, one of their sneaky peats and she, you know, and she's going to win the title. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Lana. Hmm. Now, the difference here, though, don't the fans push for Lana? They were, were they really, really pushing for Mahal? I mean, some, some crowds were, but... 
First of all, she's not even Russian. Am I right? She's from the Midwest, okay? So is, can, can she drop that accent now and get rid of that? It's garbage. First of all, I don't want to knock her, but I don't think she's got enough time. They do this time and time again. And they, they, these people that, this is what I think. This is the equivalent of Miss Elizabeth training for four months and then getting in the ring. Could you see that happening? Because I certainly couldn't. Well, no, but Lana's been in the ring in NXT for well over a year, though. Yeah, I, I know. But what was her first role? She was a valet. She was a right. manager. I mean, Diamond Dallas Page did it. Yeah, people do it, but this is a lot of pressure on her. Well, would, there's Diamond Dallas be... Page, and then and there's Lana. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a big gap in between. I know, but I'm just trying to put where you know where the starting point is, or where, okay, where okay, people okay. that have done it before, you know, and done right. very well at it. Um, I, I just don't see it. I think there'll be a few botches. Of course, she probably won't call any of the moves in the ring, but. Um, I, I don't think she's going to win. I, I, I think we'll see a retain here. All right. So we'll see how this match goes. Hopefully it's not too much of a disaster. Uh, Hopefully. Next up we have the WWE Championship match. We have Jinder Mahal defending against Randy Orton in St. Louis, Randy Orton's hometown. And um, this match is going to be interesting because Jinder Mahal just won the title. But on the other hand, it is Randy Orton's hometown, and apparently Cowboy Bob Bourne. What is that sound? It's Sorry, Jinder I'm... Mahal's people are trying to sabotage our video, darn it. They are. It's true. It's true. The thumbs downs begin. Here we go. That's it. Sorry, oh, guys. Uh, hopefully uh, that doesn't pick up too much in the sound. Oh, there it goes. It sounds better now. Um, so Jinder Mahal just won the title. And I think, I think it's too soon for him to lose it. I think he's going to retain somehow. Although, as they mentioned on SmackDown, Cowboy Bob Bourne is going to be at ringside. And um, I guess Randy Orton's family and friends. So they really made a big deal out of it that it's going to be in Orton's hometown. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'm going to go with Jinder retaining. But I, I could very easily also see Randy Orton winning the title back. Um, just that would make him 16 times, though, wouldn't it? I think it's only like 13 times. How many 15. Is it, 15. Oh, it'd be his, so it would be his 15th time. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, it's something okay. like that. Um, According to Bradshaw, when he won at Mania, it was 14. So, uh, what, what okay. do you think, Gary? What are your thoughts on this match? Well, I, I can always guarantee. Oh, well, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I, Jinder Mahal is going to retain. He's, he's. I think what's going to happen is, is uh, uh, Bob Orton's, you know, Randy's dad is going to interfere in the match. He's going to get him disqualified. Something's going to happen there. There's a reason for that. A, they were mentioning that. That's a good. That's uh, a good point there. I like that. And the other thing is, is that they got to save, they got to save Super Cena for SummerSlam to beat Jinder Mahal, so he gets his 17th title. Great point. Great so point right that's uh, Jinder Mahal is going to win. I think I think Cowboy Bob Orton's going to interfere. Something's going to happen on the outside. And, He's going to bring and, the cowbell with him. <laughs> well, maybe who knows? Yeah, but got have more cowbell. So Randy, more cowbell. Randy will get disqualified, and Jinder Mahal is going to retain. I, I can see that happening. What do you think, Jeff? I I think that Gary used his uh, grandson's powers to take the thoughts from my mind somehow, because <laughs> it's exactly what I was gonna say. I was they're gonna save Mahal for SummerSlam and the Almighty Super Cena to get his record-breaking win. Although it's not really record because Ric Flair has more than seven to sixteen titles. But yeah. Anyway, that's, oh, that, that, Jeff, I wanted to add. You know, on table for three, Ric Flair said something about that. He said that if, yeah. if Cena gets close, he's just going to change the the number of title reigns. I remember that. I almost I almost called you. I thought, oh my god, right. see, Rick Rick gets it. Right, well, for those casual viewers that don't know, there was times Ric Flair had to drop it in really hostile environments like in Puerto Rico or something. So those were never acknowledged by the NWA or the WWF. What's up? I'm not counting the ones like Jack Vino or whoever in Puerto Rico. I'm talking documented victories that the NWA record book show or WCW broadcasted or WWE acknowledged. At first, there are, I think it's either 20 or 21 legitimate. I'm going to go over this on Talk Wrestling. Like, thank you, Aaron, for the topic. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, um, as far as the, the, the match on Sunday between Mahal and Orton, I think Gary's going to run the money. Somehow, Orton, Bob Orton's going to interfere somehow and cost Randy and drive Randy over the edge. Not only is he going to lose in his hometown, he's going to drop his dad right in the middle of the ring in front of everybody. Just cause. That's an interesting prediction right there. I just I just see Randy completely going over the deep end and going back to the, the slithering viper that he's supposed to be and going, you know what? Hell if, I, if he can RKO his girlfriend before the Undertaker WrestleMania, he can do anything. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if he just drops Cowboy right in the middle of the ring in front yeah. of the whole family going, oh, my God. Hopefully but, one yeah, doesn't Mahal, bleed. Yeah, again, um, one, went, one way or the other, Mahal retains, and he goes to SummerSlam to drop to Cena. Yeah, I hate to go along with the field here, but that's probably what's going to happen. See, I, I, I planned it more like Bob Orton will be in the front row type thing. And you remember when uh, Chris Jericho and CM Punk had their match, and Chris Jericho went over to CM Punk's sister or whatever, yeah. and she right. slapped him type of thing, and then, you know, uh, Punk got enraged. I could see something like that happening. It would be really ballsy for WWE to turn Orton again. I mean, I make fun of it all the time and say this guy turns from heel to face more than anybody in the history of the business, it seems Except like. Big Show. Yeah, it's true. Except Big Show has been kind of an even keel now for the last, you know, eight years or so. But, right. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I see I see exactly the formula you guys are saying. I think Mahal Rand, You know, Randy's, Randy's been stagnant here. He's kind of getting boring a little bit. So I think they need to, so he needs to change. He needs to do, do something. The minute he went heel and joined the Wyatt family, he started going... Again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's already a heel to a lot of the internet with the 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 dot 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 dive comment. Well, yeah, and you know what? As much as I'm an independent guy, I see both points of view on that. I really do because you know, Randy, Randy never had to come up in the in the in, in the independence. He get right into Ohio Valley. He had with, a silver spoon up his ass and in. He with really his old did, man. Let's fa- let's face it. And I, I'm not disagreeing with that, but you know I understand where he's coming from. But then there's guys like the Bucks who have done nothing but independence, except for you know, Ring of Honor as well, and a brief little glimpse of TNA. But you know those guys do nothing but the monkey flips and the dives and the Meltzer driver, <laughs> which is the greatest thing ever, um, and stuff like that. So I understand both sides. I'm a fan of both sides. Right. Yeah, well, I agree. Me too. Well, I, you know what I would think would be cool. I think it would be cool if if Orin turned heel and then. They actually played up on real life and had Orton go after the cruiserweights and and, and pro- proclaim himself to be the cruiserweight killer and say oh he's going to take out all the spot <laughs> monkeys in WWE. Pull, pull a pull, pull, pull a Kevin Nash, huh? Yeah, exactly. That would, that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Kill all the vanilla midgets. Yeah, exactly. Use that term on TV. Call them vanilla oh, yeah, midgets. Yeah, totally. Just, you know, but yeah, that could be a build up Orton. with him and AJ maybe, you know. I mean, that could be a good build up with him Ooh, and David they do, You know what? That, that's what they, you know, we were talking about this a couple months ago, you know, doing Randy Orton versus AJ Styles at SummerSlam. That would be an awesome match. And if, if Jinder Mahal is going to face Cena for the title, you can turn Orton and still do Orton versus AJ Styles. I love that idea. That should I mean, be I, I wanted to see that from day one. Zinson, can you hear us? Come on, guys. Book that. Oh, my can. God. Okay. What about oh. people out there watching this video? You need to tweet this to Road Dog because Road Dog's the only guy that might actually have some influence that could pull some strings. <laughs> That's it. Although we have documented that that these were our ideas, so he he won't use them. I will tell Shawn Michaels on Saturday to tell Triple H. There you go, and he'll say, "Screw you, Jeff." He'll say, "Really, me? <laughs> Come on, get out of here." <laughs> in that in that raspy voice. Come on, mate! You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> All right. Sure. So now we have the main event. In my opinion, it is the main event, the match that yes. we're, we're going to be looking forward to the most, although I think Jeff's looking forward to the female version. Uh, I but, am. That's, that, that, that's my whole thing on Sunday. But honestly, I, if the women's match can beat the men's match, that will be very impressive. I think the I men's ladder in the bat, ladder. Wow. Ladder in the bank. Money in the bank. That's all, folks. That, that's all, folks. Good night. Anyways, Good night. this is Delete. the Money in the Bank ladder match. The contract for the WWE Championship belt. We have the six participants, Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, and Dolph Ziggler. Now, I will go ahead and give my prediction first. I will be under the gun here. So on SmackDown, we saw Baron Corbin lose the main event six-man match. He got pinned by Sami Zayn yet again. This is the third loss to Sami Zayn now, so... One thing, number one, Sami Zayn is not winning on Sunday. Number two, the segment ended with Nakamura climbing the ladder and symbolically holding up the Money in the Bank briefcase. That means Nakamura is not winning. winning. Corbin has lost a lot of matches lately. There's been all this talk about him getting a major main event push later this year. I think the smart money has to be on Baron Corbin. I I think that's got to be my pick for this match. Now, my second pick... I think we should all do a second pick. Um, I will say 
Kevin Owens is my second pick. I'd love to see Kevin Owens win the money in the bank. I mean, for me, I, I, I enjoy watching Kevin Owens more than, than Baron Corbin personally. But I know WWE is high on Corbin. Uh, Kevin Owens already had his time in the spotlight with the Universal <coughs> title. But I think Kevin Owens would be a great Money in the Bank briefcase holder. So, um, David, let's start with you, and then we'll do Gary and then Jeff. Uh, David, your thoughts. You know, uh, forgive me for anybody out there that's Baron Corbin fans, and I know I know Jeff, you are, and I know you, your son really likes him, but... Yep. You know, again, here's me here's me smart marking out again and saying, well, here's a guy that didn't go through the indie system. And when you put him in, you could have put him in with Kane and some other half mid car guys. But he's in there with some really heavy hitters. And it would just seem totally forced if he won it. I, I would not be a fan if he won it, bringing back the money in the bank after being on a hiatus for a few years. It needs to have a big impact. Now, my, my first pick would have been AJ Styles, but I, I think I'm changing that now. I'm going with... I'm going to go with Kevin Owens as my first, and I'm going to go with AJ as my second. Just because I don't know what their plans with AJ is. Do they want him to have a feud with Orton or somebody else higher up before they put him back in the championship picture again, but I it wouldn't surprise me, though, if, 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 if AJ won it. So I'm going to say Kevin Owens, AJ Styles. Who's next? Gary, Gary is next. Oh, yeah. All right, Gary. Um, I'm a big fan of Baron Corbin. I've liked him ever since he's come up. I think Baron Corbin is going to win it. They, they've got to they've got to give this guy something. They, you know, he's been getting buried, 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 and then yeah. they, they got to move him up. If they're going to move him up, they got to do it now. That would be a good way to do it because then it's, it's money in the bank and he can cash it in any time. He could be anywhere from now till WrestleMania. Um, probably the second one. Uh, that's a good one. Kevin Owens would probably be good. Uh, I like the I like the Kevin Owens idea. I also like AJ Styles because hey, they've been burying AJ Styles again. You know, ever since yeah. this Ellsworth garbage that went on. Uh, you know, you know he yep. should have never. AJ Styles should have never lost to Cena, nope. you know, when they had that match leading That's up to true. WrestleMania. Most of his never title run was it. all about comedy gimmicks and stuff. Yeah, and I, I think they need a they, more legit title run, you know. You know, when Cena won that match, you know, he buried. They basically buried, um, you know, buried AJ. So, I don't know, but I still, I'm still, I'm still hot on uh, Corbin. I've always, like I said, I've always liked him, and I think they, they, they got to move on this guy. They got to do something with him. All right, Jeff. All right. Baron Corbin is actually my third pick. We can't make a third pick. But what? He, he's he, he's third on my. I know. I know. I know. Whoa. My my my, my second pick. My my just maybe maybe pick is actually going to be Sammy Zayn. Sammy oh, Zayn gets buried a lot. Uh, Sammy Zayn went from one show to the other, claiming he wanted to be playing an opportunity, and his opportunities have been about about this much. See about this much. It's ridiculous how he's been buried on both shows. And Aaron, you and I have seen Sammy in person against Kevin completely to their house stand on both coasts. It's ridiculous how much both those guys have been on the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So Zane's my second, just maybe pick. My overall favorite to win is the guy that's going to go the Miz route in 2010. He's going to go in U.S. champion, lose the belt somewhere along the way. Yes, I said belt. And go on to cash in on the WWE champion, Kevin Owens. There you go. Kevin Owens. And remember, Jeff, the Jeff Meacham rule applies here for all of us. The predictions now are final. You cannot go on Twitter and change your predictions. Is that your final answer? (laughs) Yes. I'm out of control. Um, Yes. Yes. Um, Yes. Okay, so Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, uh, Natalia and Charlotte, uh, Usos, Mahal to retain. I didn't say how, just Mahal to retain. And uh, what else was there? Oh, uh, I think that was Naomi it. Naomi to retain. Oh, Naomi. Naomi to retain. Okay. And then in the and what I think it's going to be the kickoff match. Rizango beats Rizango beats the Collins. I agree on that. I think we. I think we'll all just we'll all just say that. You know, who cares about the kickoff match? You know, they'll, they'll likely announce it on Sunday. Um, nobody even cares anymore. That's so stupid. But all right, that, that's it. We got the five matches. That's all that's important. Maybe I said that segment. just to get the pop out of pants. I feel better. Who knows? Maybe we'll see Harper versus Rowan again, just randomly or some crap. I don't know. So who cares? Who cares? You know what? It's literally an hour to get yourself the beer, the snack, and take a pee break before you sit down for three hours. That's all it is. It Exactly. All right. So hey, let me ask you guys something. Sure. Before when, we wrap this when up. When Jinder Mahal comes out, 
when he, you know, when he walks to the ring and he has that big scowl on his face and everything all the time when he walks to the ring, does it, is that, does, doesn't he look like he's constipated? Yes. yes. That he needs a laxative or something? Yeah, he, see, I, he, I can't figure that should, out because it's he, just really weird. He yeah. wears these little bitty trunks. He should seriously go to the bathroom during the kickoff show, take a dump ski and be done with it. Yeah. You well, know, you know, he's got to, he's got to do something. He's got to. He's got to have something going for him, so he's going to make the most well, you know, exaggerated he, the facial thing, expressions possible. <laughs> the thing is, his whole career prior to backlash was a big dumb ski anyway, so you know he might as well mm. look like that. Damn, that that's ice cold, Jeff. Jump I am just ball. savage and today. You're, and, you're, savage. and you're not the stone cold grandpa. You're just you're just uh, what would be a good nickname for Jeff? Angry Meech. Angry Meech. Okay. All right, guys, so that'll do it for our predictions for Money in the Bank. NoDQ.com will have the live coverage this Sunday, and we will have our post video afterwards. Who knows who's going to be in the panel? It could be any combination of guys. I know some of you guys are maybe it's all marks. Some of you love Virtue. Some of you love Jeff. Some of you love Greg. Some of you love Nobody Kyle. A lot of people Nobody love Angry Jeff. Grandpa or Jeff. Stone Cold Grandpa. So. Depending on who you like, you know, it's always a lot of fun for these videos. So stay tuned to NoDQ.com, subscribe, and now let's get the plugs out of the way before we sign off. Gary, any plugs? No, nah, the only plugs I would have is just follow um, Interstate Kyle, and uh, uh, you can follow us on GNG Wrestling. Sounds good. Hopefully you guys will have some more videos coming up soon, because people have been yeah. asking me for, for more videos from you. They, they really enjoyed your last video. Okay, we'll get on it. All right, Jeff, plug. Uh, underscore Jeff Meacham on Twitter and Instagram if you so choose um, Talk Wrestling this week, like I said, it's going to be about uh, uh, Ric Flair and how many championships Because I, I did this once before, but I'll do it again And also the review of what was arguably the worst Raw recent memory And once I finish SmackDown, the comparison between the two All right, and uh, any hate mail about the sound issues in today's video Direct at Talk Wrestling no DQ at Yahoo.com Yeah, so you send hey, it Yahoo. there what is this, 1999? <laughs> hey, I've had that since we started talking wrestling 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's consistent. All right, David, I your am. plugs? Yeah, uh, follow me at SmartMark420 on Twitter. What was that? And, and uh, that was You know what me. it was. And so and we'll be doing a pop hopefully tomorrow. I don't know who the guests are, but we'll be filming it tomorrow, and hopefully we'll get that out there and have some uh, some good uh, controversial topics for you. Stay tuned. <laughs> controversy, right. I'm your guy. Well, you are the guy. We'll, we'll see how guy. things go. So stay tuned for Pop, hopefully some G&G Wrestling, Talk Wrestling, and all that good stuff. AaronRift.com, which is actually my personal page. Um, YouTube.com so slash AaronRift, no DQ. But if you want to just get my personal page, it's AaronRift on YouTube. So that'll do Cats. it, guys. Yes, that's mainly cat videos, but a lot of other good stuff on there as well. Beatles videos um, and got some other stuff coming up pretty soon. So that'll wrap it up, guys. We will see you next time.